Thank you very, very much, Stefan, and thanks to the organizers for uh, inviting me to speak. I'm going to talk to you about the rise of genetic genealogy as a citizen science. I'm also recording the audio and will reconstruct a video that will go up on YouTube. So just be aware that during the Q&A session, if we have time, uh, you'll be recorded for YouTube as well. Uh, my YouTube channel can be found uh, at DNA and Family Tree Research, where I have about 50 or 70, 80 uh, videos relating to genetic genealogy. Uh, there's also a lot of information in the two posters I have downstairs and I'll give you a link at the end where you can download should you wish to uh, have them as a PDF file. Now, it all started in 2000 when Family Tree DNA launched the YSTR12 test, 12 uh, short tandem repeats, and uh, also the HVR1 uh, mitochondrial DNA test. And that got people uh, talking to each other. Hey, we're a match on our Y DNA. Does that mean that we have a common ancestor? But then Family Tree DNA did something very, very important. It actually started, uh, created an infrastructure where people could run their own DNA projects. And this was the start of genetic genealogy as a citizen science. And these projects could either be surname projects, haplogroup projects, uh, geographic projects, or specialist projects. And uh, Family Tree DNA allowed people to host their own websites on the Family Tree DNA website. So, for example, my Gleason DNA project has a website on the Family Tree DNA site. And um, over the course of the years, there are now 10,000 surname projects uh, administered by 5,500 um, project administrators. And this was really the birth of uh, genetic genealogy as a citizen science. The administrators of these projects engaged the community, brought people into their projects, and very soon, in 2004, Family Tree DNA uh, launched the first of an annual uh, project administrators conference, which has gone from strength to strength, and it's run every single year since then. Um, members from the community then started seeing better ways that the data could be interpreted or uh, visually presented. So World Families Network was a website set up by uh, two members of the genetic genealogy community, which included automated grouping into the projects and also identified unique STR patterns in subgroups within each of the projects. A very, very useful addition. The International Society of Genetic Genealogy, of which I'm the education ambassador, one of them at least, uh, was launched in 2005, and in the same year, uh, Family Tree DNA partnered with uh, National Geographic on the Genographic Project and analyzed uh, the DNA kits for that particular project in the early days. The Journal of Genetic Genealogy was launched in 2005 as well, and in the following year we had the first version of the ISOG Y haplotree. And since then, ISOG have curated uh, the uh, development of this definitive tree of mankind um, as one of the major outputs of uh, the genetic genealogy as a citizen science. The mitochondrial DNA haplotree is curated by um, uh, an academic group in the Netherlands. And over the years, the, uh, the infrastructure and the connectivity among genetic genealogists was held together by mailing lists, uh, Facebook groups, uh, blogs emerged. The ISOG wiki was launched in 2010 and is a repository for all the information that we've gathered over the years regarding genetic genealogy. And then members of the community started their own conferences. So I started the Genetic Genealogy Ireland conference in 2013. It's a uh, run eight times since then and we have a conference in Dublin and Belfast every year. And of course these conferences give us the opportunity to interface with academia and um, we have had uh, people from Ancient DNA Labs come and present at our uh, conferences which are open to the general public. And of course health in the future will play a much bigger role in these types of conferences. But it was in 2007, with the launch of 23andMe's autosomal DNA test, that uh, the focus of genetic genealogy began to move in the, away from Y DNA and towards autosomal DNA. Uh, they introduced genetic cousin matching in 2009, and that was a, a seminal a point in the development of uh, uh, this citizen science. 
JetMatch was launched by members of the community, a public website that allowed cross-platform comparison of autosomal DNA. So you could upload your DNA to JetMatch and compare yours with somebody's DNA that was uploaded from a different company. And JetMatch became very important when law enforcement started using it to catch serial killers. And this was last year. Then in 2012, <clears throat> Ancestry joined the, the uh, autosomal DNA market, and later MyHeritage and Living DNA in 2016, and was following uh, the uh, competition within the market that we saw a, an exponential growth in the direct-to-consumer uh, genetic testing. So there's roughly about 30 million people now uh, who have had a DNA test done by one of these companies. Ancestry is ahead with about 15 million, it's probably higher than that now, more closer to 20 million, uh, followed by 23andMe, which has about a, a customer database of 10 million people. And in conversation with colleagues, we reckon that the market segmentation is about 60% of people are only doing it because they want to know who am I, what's my makeup, am I more Irish than my brother, yay, fantastic. Um, about 25% of people are doing it for genetic genealogy purposes, using the DNA to help them with their family tree research, and only 15% are primarily interested in health. So those are crude estimates. But that gives you an idea that the majority of people who are uh, testing are not actually interested in genealogy and they're not interested in health. It's just really some, a Christmas gift they got and they're uh, interested in this type of thing. The population admis admixture estimates or their ethnic makeup. Ancestry probably has the best um, of these currently and they're able to drill down to the um, the uh, re sub-regional level, here you see this person has DNA from the Leash uh, Kilkenny area and also from the uh, Wexford um, Carlow area as well. Um, we also get a list of our DNA matches with the estimated relationship. Uh, these are my dad's results. You can see that the first person there is me. That was a great relief and um, doesn't always happen. Um, it also tells you uh, how much DNA you share with each of these people and uh, you can see which segments of DNA on your chromosomes you actually share with each of your matches. You compare your ethnic uh, makeups as well. It also gives you, uh, allows you the, the uh, facility to compare, to see what shared matches you have with each match within your list. So these are a group of, of people that uh, uh, all share each other as matches and the uh, uh, the possibility is that you all are descended from the same common ancestor and that helps you focus your genealogical research. Uh, MyHeritage also have this very nice triangulated segment tool which allows you to identify overlapping segments and this can be very, very useful for genealogical proofs. The uh, switch then from uh, Y-DNA to autosomal DNA um, allowed many people in the, the customer base to become citizen scientists in terms of um, creating tools and software and websites to help organize, interpret the data and visually present it. And many of the tools created by consumers were later adopted by the direct to consumer companies. And this really just goes to, to, to emphasize again this symbiotic relationship that we have between industry, academia and the customer base. And a new opportunity for citizen science opened up as a result. So I'm going to whiz through some of the tools that were um, uh, made available to the general public and the consumer base. This is GEDmatch, which I've uh, talked about before. A various suite of tools. Uh, you can find out are your parents related, looking at realms of homozygosity. Zygosity. Uh, the phasing tool allows you to separate your maternal from paternal genomes. Lazarus allows you to rebuild the genomes of long dead ancestors from the DNA passed down to their descendants. Uh, the My Evil Twin is the 50% of their DNA that your parents didn't give you. So it's like the dark side of the moon, it's the anti-me uh, tool. Um, DNA, oh, Genome Made Pro was developed by uh, Becky Walker, who was a software designer in her previous life. It allows you to upload data from various companies and manage it all in the one place. 
Uh, DNA GEDCOM have a wonderful tool called the Autosomal DNA Segment Analyzer, uh, developed by uh, Don Worth. And this basically is a mega chromosome browser that shows you each uh, segment of DNA that you share with each of your matches. And using the matrix function here tells you whether they share, whether they match each other and therefore are part of a cluster of shared matches likely to be descended from the same common ancestor. There's an auto-clustering uh, tool that was recently released by Everett Jan Blom, and that's been integrated now into MyHeritage's uh, suite of tools. Um, Blaine Bettinger, the genetic genealogist, did a very important project on 25,000 known relationships, and he was able to calculate the minimum, maximum, and average amount of centimorgans for each of these known relationships, from siblings all the way down to sixth, seventh cousins, with a lot of removed and half relationships there in the mix. But he also was able to demonstrate this using frequency distributions and these histograms, which show you the spread of DNA for any given uh, known relationship. And you can see that these are not normal distributions, they're skewed towards the right. Um, Johnny Pearl took this one step further and invented this uh, online tool where you can put in the amount of uh, DNA shared. Uh, here it's 157 centimorgans, and it will immediately give you a range of possible relationships for that amount of DNA. This was adopted by Ancestry, and they now offer something very, very similar. Uh, Johnny Pearl, Leah Larkin, and Andrew Millard developed What Are the Odds tool, which generates odds ratios for a variety of different possible relationships based on the amount of DNA shared with matches who are known to be relatives to each other. And this is very, very useful for working with adoptees and helping to place the adoptee in the family tree of the known matches. Uh, Prometheus is the last of these tools that I'll talk about. And again, this uh, a lot of you will be familiar with it, uh, but you can upload your data from any of the major direct-to-consumer companies and it will produce a medical report based on information from Snipedia. So the genetic genealogy community is a rich source of citizen scientists, um, many of them running their own DNA projects, others developing tools and software, and others working on the uh, Y uh, DNA haplotree, the tree of mankind, and keeping that up to date. A lot of specialist applications of genetic genealogy have emerged over the years, um, primarily tracing genetic families of adoptees, foundlings, donor-conceived individuals, and we've been doing that in the community for the last seven years or so. Um, one of the Facebook groups, DNA Detectives, which is devoted to this type of research, has over 111,000 members in it. So it gives you some idea of the magnitude of this crowdsourced citizen science. Last year, uh, we discovered that the same genetic genealogy techniques were being used by law enforcement to identify human remains, and the DNA Doe project is, is uh, committed to that particular uh, area of research. And then, of course, the Golden State Killer hit the headlines in April 2018, um, and since then, 28 arrests have been made last year in the US um, using this genetic genealogy technique to track down serial killers and rapists as a result of which GEDmatch and Family Tree DNA have changed their terms of service so that law enforcement are allowed to use the database in the same way that any other consumer can. Future possible directions of genetic genealogy. Uh, it may include identifying soldiers' remains from the field of battle, children's remains buried at former children's home, uh, which is a big um, issue now in Ireland, uh, in Tuam, County Galway. They have, uh, the government has sanctioned the excavation of this disused sewage pit, which may contain the remains of 800 children. Um, they can be applied to really any mass grave situation, uh, casualties from man-made or natural disasters, the World Trade Center, the California wildfires, that sort of thing. New social applications could include social uh, cohesion programs, peace programs, even reparations for slavery. And new anti-social applications could include misuse by government, and we've seen this in China and in, in Kuwait. Espionage uh, in the US, they're particularly sensitized to Russian interference, um, and even sabotage by hacktivists. And this, of course, raises the issues of privacy, data protection, and the need for regulation. 
Um, and it's a constantly evolving environment that uh, demands adaptation. And certainly within uh, the community and also within industry, uh, various attempts at self-regulation have been instituted. Uh, there are various guidelines and standards available. Um, but the need for external regulation may be informed by the ongoing UK Parliamentary Science and Technology Committee's inquiry into commercial genomic testing. And if, interested, if any of you are interested in making a submission to this Common Select Committee, the closing date for applications is, uh, for submissions is April the 26th. So do check that out. Uh, we also have the UK Biometrics and Forensics Ethics Group, which is currently exploring the uh, possibility of using genetic genealogy techniques here in the UK to help uh, with cold cases. And we're also watching very closely the current uh, debate in Maryland, uh, where there's a bill that attempts to curb familial searching within the uh, commercial genomic databases in a similar way that they've curbed searching in the CODIS database. So genetic genealogy has come a long way. Um, new frontiers await, and there are definitely interesting times ahead. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.